Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Don from Avalon Advanced Materials. How are you today, Don? I'm great. Great to see you again. Don, I would love it if you would just start by telling us who Avalon Advanced Materials, who you are today, because I noticed you, you identify three advanced stage projects that you're currently focused on. We continue to be a diversified player in the specialty minerals and metals space, offering our investors and shareholders exposure to a broad range of these uh, technology metals, as they're often referred to. And right now, our big focus is on lithium for all the uh, reasons that most of your listeners would be aware of now. Well, we are interested in lithium, and we're really interested specifically in technology processes. So your most recent news release in February about a deal you have with a Perth-based uh, technology company is of great interest to us. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yes, the company was Lapidico. Uh, we met them last fall, and they told us how they are developing a new process for recovering lithium from lithium micas, including one called lapidolite that we have a lot of at our resource at Separation Rapids, but never really looked at in the past as an opportunity. So they did some test work uh, for us on it, and that demonstrated that they, they can process that material and recover a very high purity lithium carbonate product that looks uh, like it could be a winner for us. And of course, your, this, your lithium project is your Separation Rapids Advanced Lithium Project, is that correct? That's correct. We've been working on this project for most of the 20 years I've been running Avalon now. First as a producer of a lithium mineral for glass ceramics back in the 1990s. Obviously now with the new demand for lithium in battery materials, that's creating a new opportunity for us to re-examine this uh, resource and create a battery material product for that market. And of course, history is very important. I was introduced to you, Don, when we did a, when we did a TV series uh, having to do with the rare earths in 2008. Are you still working on your rare earth project? We've still got it in inventory. Uh, we think rare earths will have another day. Obviously, the demand went soft when China's policies changed there a few years ago. We got that project through feasibility and mostly through the permitting stage, so we're ready to resume when there's sufficient demand in the marketplace and hopefully a more efficient extraction process to lower the cost of production for rarers. You have one of the most advanced teams, of course, in the technology metal market sector, and um, I noticed that in your presentation currently you're talking about the projected demand growth for lithium battery materials. So I'm assuming you're a leader on your forecast. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Well, we rely on what we are hearing from other experts in the space. There's lots of commentary out there, but it's easy to see what's going on in terms of the demand drivers for lithium ion batteries. Clearly the electric vehicle is here to stay. It's just a matter of how fast that rate of adoption is going to happen out there to create the demand for lithium ion batteries, the preferred energy storage solution in that application. But it's not just about electric vehicles either, it's also stationary energy storage and home energy storage to allow people to make use of renewables and get off the grid. And will this technology provide a competitive advantage for you in tapping into this market? It gives us quite a bit of flexibility in how we develop this uh, resource. We have more than one lithium mineral there. The mineral petalite that we originally defined as an industrial mineral for glass ceramics, it still has markets there. Last year we demonstrated we can make a lithium battery material from that mineral. Now we know we've got another mineral in this same resource that we didn't even think about back in the 1990s as an opportunity that Lapidico have demonstrated they can make a, a high purity lithium carbonate from using their process. So that gives us another opportunity to extract value from this very unique resource. And what should we as shareholders anticipate, say, in the next couple of quarters, Don? Well, we're going to keep doing the process test work to define exactly how we want to process this material. So we can move forward into the pilot plant stage, ideally building a demonstration scale pilot plant, which is the key to getting into this business. We know we have a resource, but if you want to create value for your shareholders, it's all about demonstrating how you're going to be able to make a product that'll get accepted in the marketplace. And the sooner you can start making that product, introduce it to potential customers, 
the better you're going to be in terms of your chances of actually uh, achieving a successful commercial operation of the day. So all of our work is really focused on, on that right now with that goal in mind. Hopefully we can get that plant up and running in uh, 2018. In the background, we're also going to do some more work on the resource. Uh, now that we have this revelation on lipidolite and it's uh, the opportunity that creates, we got to do some more drilling to better define the lipidolite component of the resource that we never actually did any work on uh, uh, 15 years ago. Well, Don, thank you so much for providing us with an update of Avalon Advanced Materials today. My pleasure.